Hi, hello again. I'm Eddie at Alpha Man Services and thank you for watching this video and thank you to all uh, the people who've been subscribing to my channel. I do hope you're all well in the midst of this awful virus that we're all going through. I do hope all your family and all your friends are well and I hope they're all staying safe. Anyway, I've got this engine here. It's from an Alpha 3.2 V6, the GM version, from Fitzabrera 159 and a Spider. And I just want to show you how to take the chains off, how to put a new kit on. This engine came from a wreck that I bought. It was a rat infested wreck off a of Brera and we couldn't start the engine because all the electrics had, I suppose, they'd melted. So I've stripped the whole of the engine down and I was very lucky with this engine because I found that it already had a new timing chain fitted not that long ago. The engine oil was quite clean. I didn't have to spend a lot of time cleaning the sump. Here's the sump. I just gave it a little squash through and it was, it was quite clean. I was very fortunate. And I stripped the engine down. I sent both heads away, had them machined at my local machine shop. They cleaned all the valves, put new valve stems in, gave them back to me. I looked at all the components. All the components were very, very nice. And I've got the remains of two other engines, which are over here. I've got the two blocks next door. And this engine here was one that I pulled out of a car. And I've actually washed the, I washed the sump out very quickly, but it's just engulfed in carbon and bits of metal. It's got so much sludge in it that I understand why and how the engine seized up. But anyway, getting back to this engine, what I've done to this engine, I just want to go through some of the components and the reasons why you need to change the chain kit on these engines, probably 70, 80,000 miles. These are some of the chains that I've taken off other engines and they're basically totally worn out. And you've got two of those chains. They run the heads and you've got the lower chain here that runs coming from the crank and it runs those two chains from these two um, sprockets there. And these chains are absolutely worn out, both of them. And here is a new one from a new kit that we sell and there's not there's no movement in any of these chains these are absolutely lovely the engine has three tensioners one two three this tensioner tensions up the crank chain and these two tensioners they tension each cylinder head chain. When you change the chain kit, you do have to be very careful when you strip it down. And you, when you rebuild it, you must only rebuild it in order. You can't actually rebuild this engine in the wrong order. And the reason is, on the oil pump, which I've removed, I've cleaned out. Here's one 
here. Here's another one here. It's actually got two timing marks. One, two. So what you have to do is you have to assemble this side first and you set your chains up with this mark here where's it on here that's good isn't it can't find it. there it is there you set that mark up to that spot like so and then you set this up you then put this main chain on and then you turn the engine so that's in line and then you can assemble this up the engine's got four variators You've got two different types you've got an exhaust variator and you've got an inlet variator you can't interchange them and hopefully your ones are all okay you can buy new ones they're not that expensive but if you had to buy all four plus a chain kit plus a gasket set that's a lot of money but we'll, we'll ignore that for the time being. Now, these wonderful tensioners, they're very, very clever. They're exceedingly clever. Here's just two of them. Now, what you have to do is you have to load up this in here, but you just can't bang it in. There's a sequence to it. You have to get the internal part and then you have to squeeze it in so it doesn't pop out. Then what you have to do if you you have to put it in here and you can feel that's hydraulicking because it's probably got lots and lots of old oil in there you push it in and then you squeeze it until you can put the pin through then when it's loaded up and you've got your chain on, you then pull and out it pops. And now it's tensioning the engine. And you do it as you go around. Now also over here, I've got these three camshaft locking plates. And if you bear with me for a second, let's just lift this up. Bloody hell. So if you come round here, this, not that one, this one here, is the locking plate for this camshaft. And if you come round here, you can see that that locks in place there. Now, just, to, just come back here, John. This one here locks in place here. You can see 
the slot and the slot there. When the engine is in position to put this chain on, I've turned the engine around to put to assemble this cam on, this, this chain, this cam chain on. So what I've done is I've turned the engine before I put this one on. And you can see the differences. So when this is in the, when this uh, chain is in the other position, these flats are basically horizontal. They fit there. So I know I've got the position of the cams correct. I've got the position of the, the crankshaft correct. Then I've turned the engine. And now I've got the position of this cam correct, because that fits beautifully in there. And I know my timing is right, because this slots in and fits just beautifully like so. You don't actually 100% need these, but it certainly made my life a little bit easier. It's given me uh, a checkup to make sure that I've actually got the cam timing right. And you can see, uh, they are. you could put a ruler and you could measure the distance here and the distance there it should be the same. You could do the same over here when this this head is in the other position you can make sure that that's right without having these cam locks but i've got them uh, i sell them and they're very very handy to have when you do the cams of the chain swap you you and you don't have these locks you could mark your cams up to get them spot on you don't actually have to take the cams out so that's the end of this little video on the next video i'm going to do i will show you how to take the chains off how to take all the sprockets off and then how to put everything back before i go i just wanted to show you the old pieces over here um come on have a look at this plastic this is the chain guide for the bottom chain guide. Look how worn and horrible that is. I've shown you the chains. All the other guides and plastic bits are all basically buggered and worn out. On one of the engines, I've stripped. You've got three sprayers, and they spray the little ends on the conrods. And one of them was totally blocked up. That's why one of the engines seized up. And why do, the, why do the chains stretch? Why do the chains wear out? Why does these, these runners all break up? Because we've had them breaking up. What, what, what's happening here? Well, the reason what's happening is there's just too much carbon in the oil. Why is there a lot of carbon in the oil? It's because the injectors, instead of spraying into a plenum chamber and then mixing with the air and then being induced into the, into the valve chamber, what's happening is all these engines have got direct injection. So the only thing that goes past the valves is the air. There's no fuel, diesel or petrol, cleaning the valves or the valve stems so they accumulate a lot of carbon and in my next video i will show you what happens and why it's happening so for the time being i'm just going to tidy all this up and 